Hey everybody, it's Wednesday afternoon and I'm going to do a little bit of an experiment today. I've often talked about the CO2 levels in my basement down here and how I think that that contributes to all of the lush green growth in my tank. Well, I have a CO2 counter and lately it's been showing me about 600 parts per million, which is kind of low for being in the winter time in the basement with everything all closed up. So I suspect that a lot of these plants have been absorbing uh, a lot of the CO2 out of the air. They, they absorb it a lot more rapidly than aquatic plants would since they're exposed to the atmospheric air and they may re be reducing the amount of CO2 I've actually got in my atmospheric air down here. So I had the plumber in this morning, the doors were open a bunch of times, the room got a little bit chilly and as a result I have set up a little space heater to run on the floor for a few minutes and of course it's a propane space heater. It is meant for indoor use provided you've got decent ventilation. And I thought, let's just find out how much CO2, and I don't really have a, an O2 monitor or a CO monitor, but I do have a CO2 monitor. We can measure the carbon dioxide that is produced. That is the sniffer, and that is actually the counter and controller. And if you see that blinking light, that is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine hundred parts per million. We were at 600 parts per million uh, about a minute before I started shooting this video. I came in, I checked, I saw that it was at 600, and I went in, got the lantern set up. I even have the fan blowing away from the sniffer so that all of that CO2 is not rising directly up towards the sniffer, although I guess in a way it sort of is. At any rate, we're just going to let that run for about 15 minutes, and we're going to see what the CO2 levels in this room get up to over about a 15 or 20 minute period. All right, we just had another blink, which indicates we're at 1,000 parts per million. Uh, the way this works is the red light will blink for 1,000 parts per million, and then the yellow light will blink for 100 parts per million. So in just a moment, I would imagine we're going to see them both blink together, which would indicate 1,100 parts per million. And then, of course, if the yellow light continues blinking, it would be 1,200, 1,300, et cetera. So right now, we're still at 1,000 parts per million, but we were at 900 just a moment ago. So at some point, as I said, we're going to see both of those lights blink together, and that'll mean we're already up to 1,100 parts per million uh, CO2. So we are not in a particularly closed up portion of my basement you know I've got the the opening sort of half closed off but you know the rest of my basement as messy as it is is right there so we're not in a closed room or anything I do have the fan blowing and circulating and you can see how quickly that co2 is beginning to build up in the room so we are still sitting at a thousand parts per million uh, I don't know what time it is at the moment but we're going to set the timer for about 15 minutes and come back and we're going to see what kind of CO2 levels we're looking at here in the basement. And not for any particular reason. I'm not, you know, not saying I need it for my fish tanks or anything like that. I'm just running the space heater just to take a little bit of the chill off the room. But I have noticed lower than my usual levels in here. And it's, you know, just out of curiosity's sake, I'd like to see how much... Uh, a device like this actually raises the CO2 levels in a room and how quickly it does it. Just I like knowing things and this is a way for me to find something out and if I'm gonna find out about it then you're gonna find out about it because I shoot video of just about everything I do down here. So we are still sitting at a thousand parts per million and of course that's rounded to the nearest hundred. It'll have to get a full hundred more parts per million before we jump to that next light blinking. So at any rate, give me a couple of minutes, I'll be back, and we'll see where we stand 15 minutes from now. All right, it's actually been a little longer than 15 minutes. It's been about 25 minutes, actually. And we are now up to 1,300 parts per million. You see both blink at once, that's 1,100, and then you get 12 and 1,300 follow it. So there's 11, 12, 13... And we're still sitting at 1,300 parts per million. So after 15 minutes, we had only gone up to uh, 1,100 parts per million. We were barely climbing at all. It seemed like once it got up to 1,000 parts per million, it just kind of stalled out. And this is a fairly significant sized room. Uh, it does not end where you can see the, the 
dark drapes I have hanging there. That's just for um, video purposes. But the room is, I don't know, 18, 20 feet long, uh, 10 or 12 feet wide, something like that. It's a big room. And yet we're still getting that fairly significant climb. See, we're still sitting at 1,300. But once we get to 1,300, it's, you know, again, we're, we're really struggling to get it up much higher than that. And at 1,100, I came in and closed this. Now, that's not sealed by any stretch of the imagination. There's plenty of gaps all around it. But it does help to hold the warmth in here a little bit. And I figure if it's holding the warmth in here, then it's going to hold the CO2 in here a little bit too. So now we're at 1,300. Let's see if we're still there. We're going to try going the other way. All right, we're up to 1,400 parts per million now. Uh, anything under 2,000 parts per million with CO2, and you don't have anything to worry about. Frankly, anything over 2,000 parts per million, and you don't have a lot to worry about until you start getting into really high numbers, but up to 2,000 parts per million, and there's, there's no noticeable impact. You're not going to experience headaches uh, or anything like that. If it gets a little higher than that, then you might have some issues, but we can talk about that in the final segment of this video. We are going to go ahead and extinguish this now. This is a nice little heater. I'll actually put a link to this heater. It's fairly small. It's non-adjustable. It's just on or off, but it's got a tip over mechanism and all you got to do is give it a little shake usually and it shuts it right off. So now it's going to stay hot for a while and I'll have to leave it alone. Wow, I'm actually getting ice forming down around the base of the canister. And it's obviously supposed to have a full-size canister, but they didn't have any, like a camping-size canister. They didn't have any, so I had to buy this one and sort of rig it in there. But it's a nice little space heater. It's meant for indoor use. And you can see after all that time with the room closed up, we got to the 1,400 parts per million, I believe. And now we're going to go ahead and open this back up the way we just had it. We're going to give it another 10 minutes or so and come back leaving the fan on. And we're going to see how quickly all that CO2 dissipates and goes out into the rest of my basement and see what the levels sort of top off at here uh, in about 15 or 20 minutes from now. So let me get on that and I'll see you in a few. All right, it's been uh, pretty interesting watching this. Once I opened the curtain, it dropped from 1400 down to 1100 very quickly within just a matter of a couple of minutes. And then once we got down to 1100, it just sort of petered out and is kind of staying there. So I suspect that with the fan blowing and the curtain open, and it's been about 20 minutes now since I turned the um, little space heater off, I'm going to assume I'm up to about 1,100 parts per million CO2 just sort of throughout my basement at this point. Uh, maybe a little higher concentration in this room over time. Maybe that'll drop a little bit. And then, of course, as long as I don't have a massive source of CO2 being produced, I don't think it'll continue to climb. Now, me and the pets being down here, the cats and everything being down here throughout the day, and, of course, it being in the basement, the CO2 levels do tend to be a little more elevated than usual. But I've also, as I mentioned, got all this plant material growing here, and when stuff grows fast, it just sucks the CO2 right out of the air. And stuff like this in particular grows very fast and so whereas I used to have about 900 parts per million down here over the winter I'm only looking at around 600 parts now and then again this morning it dropped even lower than that with the doors being open uh, for quite a few minutes while the you know the plumber was coming and going so carbon monoxide CO is the one you need to worry about not carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide can be dangerous and it can be harmful in large quantities or for long periods of exposure. But as I was saying, anything under 2,000 parts per million. And, you know, if you're in a closed up bedroom overnight with all the doors and windows and everything closed and you're in there breathing with a candle burning, you're probably going to be waking up to around 2,000 to 2,500 parts per million in your little closed up room like that and again there's no real risk of danger or anything and once you start getting up into more elevated levels it'll be minor nuisances it'll be uh headaches it's bootsy 
it'll be headaches, trouble concentrating, that sort of thing. You've got to get up into the five, 6,000 parts per million uh, before you start getting in any kind of dangerous levels with the carbon dioxide. And carbon dioxide freely leaves your blood so that when you get out into fresh air, within a matter of a couple of minutes of being in fresh air, your blood has gotten rid of all that excess CO2 and everything's sort of getting back in line. Uh, you've got more to worry about with your blood's pH changing uh, when you get a lot of CO2 building up in it than you do anything else. Carbon monoxide, CO, is the dangerous one. When carbon monoxide goes into your body, it binds with the hemoglobin or your red blood cells, and once it's bound to it, it is bound to it and will not come off. It also prevents any oxygen from being transported by that blood cell. So that blood cell is effectively rendered useless when it comes in contact with CO2. I'm sorry, with CO, carbon monoxide. So the longer you're exposing yourself to carbon monoxide, the more and more of those blood cells you're using up and taking out of the game. And if you're exposed to high levels of it over very short periods of time, you use up a lot of those blood cells very quickly, and this is what leads to the unconsciousness and so on and so forth. So while it is still important to get any victims out into fresh air as soon as you possibly can, or you yourself, if you think you're being exposed, just don't even worry about it. Just get up and go get into some fresh air and, and worry, figure it out later. But just get into fresh air as soon as you can. With carbon monoxide, however, Whatever damage has been done has been done. Those blood cells are ruined if they've been exposed. So if somebody's already lost consciousness and you drag them outside, they're not going to come around real quickly because they're in fresh air. You still need to get medical attention. And in a lot of cases, if people have been that badly exposed, they actually need blood transfusions. That blood has been ruined. Once it's exposed to that carbon monoxide, those blood cells will not work again. They will not carry uh, oxygen to the body. And so they are ruined. So carbon monoxide is the one you've got to be very careful about. And burning stuff inside is a good way to generate large amounts of carbon monoxide. But I do have a carbon monoxide detector down here. I've actually got two of them down here in the basement. Uh, much like a smoke detector uh, would keep you safe in your kitchen. I have carbon monoxide detectors down here. So if the levels are getting anywhere near dangerous, I'll start getting beeps and alerts long before it, the alarm actually goes off. And I never even had the thing wake up or start beeping or anything. So we didn't come close to producing any uh, dangerous amounts of carbon monoxide during that little experiment. But don't take that stuff lightly. This is meant to be used. You know, this, this space heater does produce fire. So in all the safety you've got to worry about with the fire hazard, you also have to worry about those gases building up and carbon monoxide and even carbon dioxide under the right circumstances can be dangerous. So a little departure from my normal fish stuff, but vaguely sort of related to it. So if you enjoyed that or any of my other fish stuff, make sure you subscribe. You never know what you're going to get with me to all kinds of sort of topics. I always video everything that's got to do with my hobbies. So there you go. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. And I will see you real soon on the next one.